Hello everyone, welcome to Agile Cast, a podcast series for Agile enthusiasts from Zebia Agile Community of Consulting and Transformation. Zact is a community of seasoned Agile coaches and passionate Agile enthusiasts. We live by our core value of knowledge sharing, which is the only way you learn and care about your community. We have been hosting webinars, meetups, annual conferences named Agile in CR. And of lately, we have decided to share our podcast series, which can help our fellow enthusiasts in exploring the well-proven solutions in the space of business agility. In this series, I am going to talk about empiricism, the three pil- scrum pillars which is guiding the scrum and its impact on the scrum teams and in the scrum events. To ensure we are on the same page, I am sharing this from the scrum guide. Scrum is founded on empiricism and lean thinking. Empiricism asserts that knowledge comes from the experience and making decisions based on what is observed. Lean thinking reduces waste and focuses on the essentials. To start with, let's discuss the Scrum events which are helping the Scrum team to be focused and demonstrate all the three Scrum pillars, transparency, inspection and adaptation. Now let's take a moment and just look back in our life, these three words, transparency, inspection and adaptation, we always had implemented unknowingly in every situation of our life. Let's take an example. An aspiring student tried to achieve the best percentage in his or her university but failed in achieving the same. And now he or she will be transparent to themselves and did proper inspection on what could have been the root cause of not getting the best percentage and now the brainstorming happens. And yes, the finally the reason is found out and adapted the same to make sure you come out with the best percentage in the next year. Similarly, we know that there is a hurdle in cricket before the start of the game. And our cool captain Mr. Mahendra Singh Dhoni will be transparent in making the team understand the importance of the match. And in the due course of the match, he frequently inspects the situation and adapts the same the next moment to gain best results. Likewise, we do have n number of situations in our life to demonstrate transparency, inspection and adaptation. Now let's get into our scrum events where empiricism plays a vital role. Firstly, let's get into sprint planning. Transparency in the sprint planning. How does empiricism work in sprint planning? Let's hear this interesting content. Here the team can be transparent in acknowledging the team's performance, for example velocity, in the previous sprint. And what's the capacity will be in the next sprint. Without this information, any planning would purely be a guesswork. That is one thing. Coming to the product backlog, the development team selects the product backlog items PBIs to meet the product owner's objective and that everyone should therefore have a full view of the product backlog. Without this full view, the development team cannot select the PBIs they think are most appropriate. Without this transparency, the development team's commitment to the sprint may be compromised. So that's how transparency fits into sprint planning. Now let's throw some light on inspection and adaptation during the sprint planning. As the development team forecasts the work for the sprint, they inspect if the sprint is overcommitted and then start to negotiate with the product owner as to what can be removed from the sprint. To adapt. Transparency of the product backlog and team's capacity are the keys to success. So keeping the earlier things into mind, if the team is transparent enough to see what our sprint goal is and what are we achieving. If we have done similar kind of work in previous sprints, why can't that be taken into consideration as the inspecting element which would greatly help the current sprint in terms of adapting the same. Let's take a real-time scenario where a developer is bit shy and never comes up and speaks in front of scrum team and thinks let's complete somehow the sprint planning. 
This kind of mindset would result in great disaster in terms of delivering the value. For now, forget the value. If I don't speak up and not being transparent on asking what I want or having healthy conversation with the showman, the product owner on what is the requirement, then we have failed in laying the foundation strong. This reminds me in saying this statement. Transparency enables inspection. Inspection without transparency is misleading and wasteful. We heard this line from somewhere, right? Yes. It's from our beautiful guide, the Scrum Guide. Another example can be, so far a Scrum team has completed 15 sprints and do we still hide ourselves in terms of clarifying the doubts? Do we still sit quiet? Thinking my front-end lead would speak or the, my back-end lead would speak or my QA team would speak or let me join sprint planning late. So this kind of atmosphere in the scrum team can only be changed by demonstrating at most transparency through which things are clarified and in the due course of the sprint, things are inspected and adapted if there is anything to make the process better. Now let's get into another important event where we spend some interesting time discussing on how these scrum pillars Transparency, inspection and adaptation would make an impact in daily scrum is a great engagement place where team can be transparent enough to see whether are we on track with our sprint goal or not. If not, what can be done regarding that area to inspect what can be improved or do we have impediments or potential blockers which is stopping our work. Getting into the skin of the game and come up with outcome and adapt it to ensure we are as a scrum team giving our best in terms of product delivery on time plus providing value. Mainly not to forget we can achieve this only by implementing the empirical scrum pillars of transparency we show, inspection we address and finally the adaptation. These three pillars are like the breath to our human body to function to the best without any friction, right? Let's take an example that a developer was not showing any kind of transparency and resulting in work delay. Yes, this pretty much happens in every team, right? If he or she could have been more transparent in what he or she wants and showing up the courage could result in the work to be delivered on time as well as it brings the clarity on what he or she wants. In this way, if every team member demonstrates their courage and showing up the transparency and inspecting on what is happening and adapting the outcome of inspection would result in great product delivery and we can see a lot of happy faces. As we come together every 24 hours, this is the most happening and engaging 15 minute time boxed event where we speak less and our work speaks more. And if as a team we don't inspect the work done transparently, the next 24 hours will be chaos or surrounded with ambiguity on what needs to be done, whom to contact whom not to contact or let me sit quiet and let me ask my queries the next morning or let me have some good excuses. These things will scatter across the mind and all these factors would result in nothing but time waste. We make sure we have the right mindset in achieving the sprint goal by adapting the outcome of inspection. Now let's get into another very interesting sprint review. Like all other scrum events, the sprint review is a mechanism of empiricism. Inspecting the potentially releasable increment and adapting the product backlog by capturing feedback and adding new product backlog items. The sprint review is a mechanism to inspect what was delivered in order to adapt, improve and introduce changes into the new sprint. The sprint review is one of the most important events in the scrum framework and one highly dependent on scrums 
underlying empirical pillars. A sprint review is held at the end of the sprint to inspect the increment and adapt the product backlog if needed. During the sprint review, the scrum team and stakeholders collaborate about what was done in the sprint. Without the team being completely transparent and sharing as much information as possible or the stakeholders not being completely engaged, the outcome will be the scrum team potentially building something which doesn't deliver customer value. Transparency in the sprint review happens by creating a shared understanding of what the team attempted to do, why they attempted to do this, whether they achieved it, and what the next direction will be and why. Inspection comes from the stakeholders being able to inspect what the team has produced and what is the direction of scrum team wanting to set the next sprint. Adaptation comes from allowing the stakeholders to feed into the direction of the team. Let's now touch upon the product increment. Maybe stakeholders want to expand the scope of what was built. Maybe they were not happy with what was built and they want some changes. For example, can you please change the text? You are missing an error code when some data is missing, etc. This is where the product backlog can be adapted as stakeholders request changes to the new functionality. Talking about the direction of the scrum team, are the stakeholders happy with the direction set by the product owner? Do they want to change the direction due to changes in the market or because the benefits of the increments were not or cannot be realized? From an empirical process point of view, you can think of each sprint as an experiment to hopefully deliver an amount of value or create a path in delivering an incremental amount of value. Each sprint, the stakeholders can ask the question, did I get the value I thought I was going to get? And if not, the direction of the scrum team can be changed. Adaptation. Finally, it's important the team is as transparent as possible with the stakeholders. Let's get into another interesting scrum event where our scrum pillars can be mostly displayed or demonstrated. The sprint retrospective. Probably everyone's favorite moment. The great place to be just comfortable, not talking anything technical, probably a healthy argument session from which a great outcome takes place in the form of action items, which can be implemented in the next sprint. Here the teams can take certain breathing space in assessing the quality of work done plus the quality of communication taken place plus the things the team thinks to start stop and continue immediately starting from the next sprint. To perform all the above points, a beautiful scrum team must have the scrum pillars in place to just be more comfortable and be more peaceful in terms of product delivery on time. Hence happy faces all around. Let's take a real time example. In my recent engagement, I have observed the team is not honestly more interactive and based on my observations, I saw only either the lead is speaking or if we take any names in particular, only then we can hear a different voice. To just break this kind of monotonous way of retrospective, I have presented them my own presentation based on the observations I saw. And I explained them what the scrum values, the courage and openness as an example. And main importantly, the brain takes not the assertive statements and it works like this. You tell them the consequences of not speaking up and that resulting in the work delay or in not achieving the sprint goal. Slowly, by implementing this way of talking more on the consequences, making them understand the end result where the customers would have the real feel of the product and the team should know about the business rather than just asking what is the purchase order or the fulfillment order or can you please share the JSON message or the XML message. So instead of these, if the team is given a basic showcase of the actual business they are going to build, it would excite the team every day with the same enthusiasm and commitment. 
In this way, now I can proudly say team is having the business knowledge and now the team is coming on time with where the daily scrum is at 10 a.m. And they are transparent in addressing dependencies, pretty much doing the inspection and adapting the same in the current sprint, hence delivering the results. Hence, happy faces all around. Let's take a moment to talk on the sprint itself. As we all know, sprint is the container event which comprises sprint planning plus daily scrum plus sprint review and retrospective. In the sprint, every moment we engage and encounter, there is a great scope to demonstrate transparency, inspection and adaptation. One has to have the clarity else any activity or the work they are doing which will be half done. We got 10 good working days if it is a two week sprint to show up our courage by being transparent in all the above events we discussed till now. Empiricism is the best philosophy that we learn best from our actual experiences and of course Scrum is designed for complex problems. For empiricism to work properly, we should inspect and adapt frequently. The goal has to be crystal clear. Running 100 miles in the wrong direction is of no use. Running at least one mile in the right direction is productive. Not to forget, empiricism is an essential element of Scrum and is a critical way by which we can emerge the best fit solution to complex problem. And every Scrum team should exhibit transparency knowing exactly what's going on. We used to hear a lot of times, sprint goal is not achieved, we did not meet our last sprint's velocity, not clear on your story requirements. These things happen when we don't really follow empiricism. Transparency means presenting the facts as is. Everyone involved in the product development trusts each other and are transparent in their day-to-day -day work. They dare to present both the good news and the bad news with honesty. Everyone works towards a common goal which is aligned to the organization's objective and there is no hidden agenda. Inspection in Scrum includes inspecting the product, process and people for their betterment. Inspection is effectively done and feedback is shared like trash stakeholder inspects the product backlog during the sprint review and share the changes or the feedback. Adaptation means adapting the facts and feedback from inspection. When we come to know that a process or product is deviating from accepting limits, an adjustment is done to minimize further deviation. The result of adaptation is continuous improvement. Every event in Scrum provides a moment to inspect and adapt. Not only these events, but any situation you are in, maintain transparency, inspects the situation and adapt based on the facts and feedback. Well, having said and done all this, talking more on these scrum pillars, we all know this. But tell me something else that's more interesting. If you ask me this way, well, we all have grown up looking at many things and we followed certain things as an individual. We developed certain values and principles for the humankind to be existing on the planet Earth. Likewise, if we want to sustain and explore much into the unknowns, we have no other way except imbibing or embracing the transparency, inspection and adaptation to the core. And empiricism is the only way to achieve business agility. To conclude this podcast, I can say on a final note that you stop the breathing, your body stops functioning, you stop implementing scrum pillars, transparency, inspection and adaptation, guys, I'm telling you, then we stop delivering the value to the customers. With that note, I thank each and every one for listening to my podcast on breathe the way you want to breathe, implementing empiricism. <music>